Colin. Yeah. So have you seen this new product we got? No, what is it? It's a CEA series gauge that's made with the advanced sensor technology. Oh, what's the difference? Well, look at this. You can hardly tell visually. If you look really close, you might be able to do it under a microscope. But essentially, they are identical. The performance, the look, the feel, the handling, all the surface preparation, all the soldering, everything else will be the same, including those things that you're used to. If you look at the traditional gauge, you've got thermal output and gauge factor with a tolerance and gauge factor TC and all those things that are important for making your measurement, those same properties are on the advanced sensor CEA series of packaging. So let's go ahead and bond one of these things down to show the people how easy it is and how similar it is to the old traditional CEA series of strain gauge. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay, Colin, we're going to demonstrate using the advanced sensor technology CEA series gauge how similar and in fact almost identical or as identical it is to a standard or traditional CEA series of gauge. First mm -hmm. thing we got to do is we got to degrease it. CSM3 and we're going to take a dry gauze sponge, saturate it with the CSM3 and degrease the surface of our part. That way we don't grind any machine oils or anything like that into the surface. Next step is we're going to take the conditioner A and the 400 grit. Because we've got a relatively smooth surface here, we're going to start st straight with the 400 grit rather than the 320. You'll also use your conditioner A, the mild phosphoric acid solution. So we're going to flood the beam, take some of the 400 grit, and we're going to lightly abrade 10 or 12 strokes. Having completed that, we're going to take a clean dry gauze sponge, fold it into quarters, and we're going to absorb the excess material off the beam, fold it back on itself or fold a new one, and take away all the, the material with a single wiping motion. You don't want to recontaminate the surface. The next step is to scrub with the conditioner A. We're going to take a cotton tip applicator. Flood the surface with the conditioner A, the red tip bottle, and then we're going to scrub. This is going to further remove any contaminants from the surface of our beam and uh, prepare the surface chemically, uh, taking away any materials that need to be etched away. And once he's finished the scrub, he doesn't want it to dry though, he wants to make sure this is nice and wet, so he's keeping plenty of conditioner there. And then he's going to take a clean dry gauze sponge and again fold it into quarters and with a single wiping motion dry the surface of his beam. Last step of surface preparation would be to use the Neutralizer 5A and a cotton tip applicator. And we're going to scrub the surface of our beam. And this Neutralizer 5A has a little detergent in it so it's doing a little cleaning but the major purpose is to get the pH of the surface of the part back to a neutral or very basic, which allows the MBON 200 to work. Uh, MBON 200 does not like acidic surfaces. Fold a gauze sponge into quarters and with a single wiping motion absorb the material. Let's get rid of these dirty upper sheet here. We're now going to locate our advanced sensor CEA series gauges and our blunt nose tweezers and we're going to lay that gauge out uh, bonding side down which means shiny side up if you can see copper you're in, you've got it laid out right if you can't see copper turn it over okay go ahead and lay that down on the surface of our glass plate we'll take some of the PCT 3M tape and we're going to pull a little bit off because it might have been contaminated and then we'll pull another piece off and we're going to entrain the gauge with this piece of PCT 2M tape. Lifting at a shallow angle, he's going to pull it off the glass plate and transfer it over to our beam. Everything identical to the traditional CEA series of gauge. Now the next step will be to expose the bonding surface of the gauge and put the catalyst C on the back of the gauge. Lifting at a shallow angle, we don't want to damage the gauge by bending it too tight. 
a radius. He'll pull it back on itself. On the inside of the neck of the bottle of the, new, of the uh, Catalyst C, he's going to hit it one or two times, enough to get most of the material out. And then he's going to squeegee across it and lift off on the tape. We allow one minute of air dry time. Okay, now that we finished our uh, application of the strain gauge, we now need to apply the adhesive. We waited our one minute of air dry time for the Catalyst C. Colin's going to take a single drop of the Embon 200, place it at the cusp of where the tape and the beam come together. A gauze sponge folded into quarters and he's going to squeegee through there, zip, and then follow with his thumb. We're going to have one minute of thumb pressure. All right, we've waited our two minutes under the tape. Now we need to remove the gauge handling tape. And since our adhesives are excellent in shear but not too good in peel, he's going to pull the tape 180 degrees back on itself, exposing the tabs of the gauge and exposing the gauge. We do a quick visual inspection to make sure it looks like it's uniformly bonded. And based on my casual observation, it looks great. So now we have to tin the tabs of the gauge. It's an encapsulated gauge, so we don't have to worry about putting paper drafting tape down to limit the solder. Uh, the large copper tabs, as on the traditional CEA series of gauge, make it very easy to solder to. Colin's going to tin the tip, place the solder in the target area, press firmly down, add fresh solder and flux, and the whole thing should take between one and three seconds. And he's now happy with his tinning. We've previously tinned and stripped the lead wire system to go with this three-wire quarter bridge setup. So Colin's going to take a piece of the paper drafting tape, PDT1, and he's going to put it across the end of the lead wire system and form the classic Cobra head. So he's going to spring load it. And now he'll position that over the top of the tabs of the gauge. And he'll use his tweezers if he needs to manipulate the wire. And then reflow those two solder junctions. Clean the tip, lightly tin the tip, place the tip in the target area, add fresh solder and flux, and away you go. Having completed the soldering operation, we're going to now use our rosin solvent to remove the uh, paper drafting tape and also to break down the mast or the uh, uh, flux so that we can blot it away. He's going to flood the surface with the uh, cattle, uh, the uh, rosin solvent, which breaks down the uh, mastic and also begins to liquefy the uh, flux. Notice he's using just the bristles of the brush to remove the gauge handling tape or the uh, paper drafting tape. Don't want to put too much stress on those solder junctions. Now he's going to reflow with a lot of the rosin solvent and then blot it dry. This allows the suspension of flux to be blotted away and take the contamination away. And he'll do this a couple of few times just to be sure he's gotten all the flux out. He'll now introduce his strain relief loop. He'll take his pointed tweezers, place one point about oh, half an inch away from the gauge, maybe three quarters of an inch, and then rock away from the gauge, making that inchworm shape. Take a pair, piece of the paper drafting tape, shut it just behind that inchworm shape. This is also going to limit the flow out of the environmental protection. Then he's going to put another piece of the paper drafting tape above the gauge so that he can mask off the area that the M code A is going to cover. We're going to use M code A because this is a laboratory conditions test and M code A is basically good for laboratory conditions. So he's now going to flood the surface with the M code A, remembering that it's an environmental protection, not a show car finish that he's looking for. Making sure to work in and around all those solder junctions and up underneath the lead wire, he's going to 
completely cover the area between the two pieces of tape. And this will air dry in about 15 minutes. Most of the solvents will be gone. However, it will take overnight before it fully cures. And this is a CEA advanced sensor installation. Notice the similarities to the standard or traditional CEA series of strain gauge. If you didn't know any different, you wouldn't know any different. So welcome to the advanced sensor CEA strain gauge. All right, we've completed our installation. Our M code A is cured and we've hooked up to the P3 strain indicator and recorder. It's a quarter bridge, 350 ohm, note the three wire configuration. And now Colin's going to balance that out. Now look at the stability of that puppy. It's sitting there right at a, th a zero, zero, zero. Now load it up a little bit. And then put it back down there in the same location. Now, he couldn't have put it back in the very same location because it's a little difficult for the, without fixturing, but note that it comes back right to zero. Very stable, traditional CEA strain gauge, the advanced sensor CEA strain gauge. What I can tell you is, based on my opinion, they're identical and should be used interchangeably. <laughs>